Welcome back, it's Tony here from the Think to Thrive program and you're now on module three, reading. Now you may think, well, reading, that's a little bit easier to understand, uh, Tony. Uh, I think that, I guess that's gonna be about books. But actually we're gonna delve, as we do all the way through this program, to get a little bit more detail about how reading can impact your growth and your development towards the goal that you want to reach towards. And really examine that in detail. So I hear from a lot of people is there's too many books out there, Tony. I mean, I go into the bookshop and the self-development, new psychology, quantum physics, uh, popular science section is just crowded with books. Where do I start? There's too many. Oh, well, can't be bothered. And that's an excuse for a lot of people to say, well, I'm not gonna bother studying because there's, there's too, much to, uh, too much to look at. There's too many out there. So that's the first problem that, that a lot of people have. The second problem is the simple taking action and applying what it is that you have learned when you have read a book. So taking action, you know, I need to take action. I want to start reading some really, really good books to inspire me. But where do I start? What books do I start reading? And where do I go to find those? And then how can I apply what I've learned into my daily life? Because I read a book, mm, that was good. I put it down and I forget about it. And in fact, I tend to read that book when I'm on holiday, when I'm relaxed. But reading a book when I'm at work and you know when I've got the kids around and it's a busy day, that's another matter. In terms of learning and changing through reading and study, was that this, imagine this line here has been your life from beginning to end. Um, and this here is growth in the ability to learn. Okay, new things and adapt and change. We used to think that as we went through school and middle school years and then maybe up through to college, maybe starting work, that we had that growth in learning, that ability to, to grow and change. But then for some reason we hit our sort of mid thirties or early thirties and then we plateau. We just get a job for life and we just plateau in terms of our ability to grow. That used to be, ladies and gentlemen, the old model of how we learn as human beings. But in fact, it looks more like this. We go through life, we start school, we learn things, we grow ever so fast, then we plateau for a bit. Then we learn a little bit more maybe later on in life, and then we plateau for a bit. And then we learn a little bit more later on in life, and then we plateau a bit, and then it carries on. Now, if you look closely at this graph, you'll notice that all the time you, are, you have the ability, this by the way is a potential for what you can do, I mean you could choose to stop here and plateau as this one does, but you do have this ability as a human being. So you grow, you develop, you learn. But if you look at this path, you'll notice that the plateau is always there, but there's several stages of them, but as we get older, that plateau tends to get longer but you can still keep growing. So if you say you're 80 years old here, you may have plateaued, but you still have the ability, as you can see on my graph, to flick up and grow again. So there is no limit to your potential to learn new things. I study every single day. I know my if you've got a goal and you're climbing higher, I talked to you before about going up those lifts on the tower block, looking out at those different horizons. Would you agree then that you also have to keep growing as a person? The only way you can do that is through studying. Now it doesn't need to be painful and awful, oh no, I've got to do exams and it means I've got to go off to college and do an open university degree to get, no, 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 no. We're talking about finding a book you really get into that you love and just absorbing that into your frame, into your psychology so that you can then grow because information is the big deal. I said to you early on, there are two key components that you have to have in place, whether it's to improve your well-being whether it's to improve your mindset, whether it's in to improve any aspect of your life, it is one, information, access to information, new information, and two, your choice to get involved with a program. It's as simple as that. So that's why reading is really important because it will aid in your growth and you can get great inspiration from, from books. They're just absolutely wonderful. You're currently programmed subconsciously in the way that possibly is not serving you. Okay, so you could now be programmed in a way that says, oh, I can't be doing those books, they're too difficult to read, or I don't have time to do that sort of thing. But I think if I share with you some of the benefits of study and good books to read, maybe that might just 
raise your horizon, that perspective to say, oh, okay, that's cool. Maybe, I, maybe I'll try and look at a few books. Let's look at some of them. Well, first of all, studying about yourself and how you work in the world, how you can thrive in the world, opens your mind. It will open your mind to new possibilities. And that's a great feeling to have, isn't it? To have an open mind as opposed to a closed mind. It develops the art of thinking. We talked on our first module about the importance of thinking, and that thinking was quiet, calm study, questioning who you are, where you are in the world. Well, if you read, you'll develop that art, because that is an art. I said to you earlier, most people don't think. They think they're thinking, but they're not thinking. You'll feel less isolated. You may even find a great friend in a book. I can remember years ago when I first started to study, I lived out in the countryside in this barn, and uh, I didn't have a car at the time, and I had books, loads and loads of books, and I just avidly studied about what it meant to be a human being and what it meant to thrive and how to access my potential. And I'd get on my bike and I'd have a book under my arm or on the back of the bike and I'd cycle out into the countryside and I'd pull up at a pub, I'd sit there with a glass of lemonade or whatever, and I'd sit with my book and I would just study quietly in the countryside in the summer, just just reading and then I go back and, and carry on doing what I had to do. I used to love doing that so it can become a great friend and a great ally. I've heard a, a good friend just sat relaxing. It can give you that little bit of authority to say well, well actually that's not true because I've read this book and it gave this information. So it does increase your authority. It will increase your concentration. Your ability to concentrate is so important. I think mindfulness, meditation and the ability to calmly concentrate are the keys to your success. It will inspire. Now I, I think for me, I've put a star around this word inspiration because for me the biggest benefit of study is in, in, in the inspirational aspect it has on my being, uh, my ability to feel inspired. That's life changing. You know, get, get excited about reading a book. I'm going to give you some solutions now because you may still be thinking, well, it's all well and good, but you know, where do I start? Come on, Tony, get to the solutions. So let's have a look at the solutions that, that Mike and I are suggesting to you on this program in terms of reading. Four solutions, again, that you can start right away with right now. Number one, begin by taking notes. This is really, really important. In fact, do you know what? I'm just gonna fetch something for you now to show you what I mean by taking notes. Just hold on a second. 